think of it like this. Every time a ca- an agent, a cast director, a director, a producer, a studio head even put you in a position, they're putting their reputation on the line. That's why it's like the mafia. What's up, everybody? Brent Harvey here with the weekly Empower Yourself Sustaining Hour. Um, but I don't want to call it a podcast. I don't know. Is it a podcast? I don't know. Something weekly I do where I talk about the acting industry, craft, self growth of the artist, you know, kind of. Uh, sorry for the camera shake. That's what we in the industry call camera shake um it's a it's a hands-free um or handheld i mean handheld is a term we use when the camera is not on a tripod and is not on a steady cam it gives it that little bit of shake so there's a term for you so you already learned something um i shaved this week you're welcome not really i mean it's just it was time to start fresh. People often are like, are you growing a beard? I'm like, no, I'm just not shaving. Cause I'm just like, I don't, I'm not trying to grow a beard. I just don't want to shave. Um, anyways, <laughs> a little off topic, but everything's off topic and on topic. So, um, yeah, so we're going to chat this week about what was it I want to talk about? Ah, I just, I already forgot. It was, oh man, sorry. I just, I had it. And um, I have to look for it now because I just put it. No, that wasn't it. Um, Oh, yeah, that's it. It's funny because I'm watching this series right now, which is probably why this stuck out to me. But this is actually something I love talking about. Um, I'm watching this series called The Offer about how, about the making of The Godfather. So let's just talk about this, the mafia. Um, Hollywood, the industry, is the mafia in a sense and what i mean by that is not that they're they're you know the the mafioso in a sense but the structure of how it works how people i realized this a few years back trying to figure out how to get in break into the industry how to you know i came into it with the idea that I think most of us do. I think it's just, I think natural in life, just how we're designed as human beings, how we're taught at a young age, um, you know, of the, there's good and there, there's a good guy, there's a bad guy. And as you get older, you realize there's, there's so many shades of gray between the good and the bad and the good and the bad are usually, you know, opposite sides of the same coin type thing i realized that the industry is very much like the mafia in the sense of and i say that from a place of like my understanding of what it is from movies about you know the mafia and things like that in the sense of you have to know somebody and that somebody has to vouch for you to get in, right? And if they vouch for you, if you screw up, they're the ones that lose their job. They get whacked, whatever you want to call it type thing. And I realized that because, let me take it back. When I, when I first started in this industry, my idea was, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to start all over again. Okay. So I realized the industry 
is like the mafia in the sense that, right, that's where I was going. When I first started, much like when we're younger and how we see the world black and white, and then you get older and you realize there's a lot of shades of gray in between the black and the white and uh, the good and the bad guy are usually the same side of, or opposite sides of the same coin. Um, I came into the industry from the perspective of whoever is the best at the job, whoever's the best actor, you know, you, if you really become a very, you know, if you, you really work and develop your talent or you go into an audition and you really kill it um, and do a great job that you'll get the job. Turns out that's not true. As I continued on my journey and many times didn't get the job, even when I felt I did a great job, even when I heard, man, that was, that was, that was the best read I've seen all day. Or like, you know, um, nobody's, nobody's done it like that. Or, you know, you're a great actor. Like all these things that I heard along my journey and then uh, didn't get the job went to somebody else. And there were times where it went to people who I didn't, you know, I looked at it. I was like, Oh, like they didn't, that was a, okay performance i guess or sometimes a bad performance which is relative you know that's my perspective but um what i realized especially as i started to gain success and as i started to um develop relationships with other people in the industry that had influence i started to realize that those relationships as people start how do I want to say this as people started to come to me and they started to perceive me as somebody who could do something for them I started to feel that resistance of or what all these people that that I was approaching and asking for opportunities, I started to feel that of like people were just coming to me with their hands out and wanting something. People like sometimes I didn't even know or didn't know uh, what they could do. And they're just like, hey, you know, uh, I had a student once uh, who was very new to the uh, to the craft, just to the industry, to the craft. Um, and they found out that I, I had a production company with a partner some years ago, and we were developing some projects. And one of the projects we attached one of the biggest casting directors to. And it took a lot of work. It took, it not only took a lot of work, it took a lot of, it, we had to raise money and then pay this person just to sign on. And then, of course, it goes up on IMDb and it got announced in some form or fashion, I forget. But but my student found out about this and they came up to me and they're like, Hey, I heard you're uh, develop, you're, you're producing this project. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of my projects. And they're like, yeah. And you have so-and-so as the casting director attached to it. I was like, yeah, like, we're pretty excited about that. And they're like, uh, will you do me a favor and introduce me? And I was like, no. And, and they were like, why not? And I'm just like, it's taken me years to get to this point. I had to raise all this money. I had to create, I had to find a project. I had to develop it. I had to raise the money to, to even work my way into this person's office to even hire them. And you just want me to introduce you so she can give you a, a role or audition you or get you in the office. And it was, a, that's, that's, that's around the time I started to realize why the industry is like the mafia, because the people who have worked to get in the position that they're at have a credibility. They've developed a credibility within the industry. And, and let me tell you, if, if you're not in the industry yet, like for the professional part of the industry, the Hollywood, um, New York, Atlanta, London, uh, Sydney, you know, Vancouver, Toronto, like the, 
the big players that are all basically the, 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 the core of it is Hollywood. If you haven't been doing that for a while, um, it is, it, it, it really is not only your talent, but who, you know, and the people that have been in the industry long enough, this is where I was going to go with this, sorry, where that have been in the industry long enough, realize that this industry, even though it spans globally, is not that big. Every, I, I had an agent, uh, my first commercial agent actually told me uh, when I first started, it was like, Brent, everybody in this industry, um, if you've been in long enough, everybody's dated everybody, everybody slept with everybody, everybody's been screwed over by somebody else. And like, everybody's done business together, you know, he goes, the, once you start getting into the, he called it the fishbowl, once you get in the, invited into the fishbowl, like it gets really small and it is like, it seems from the outside, it seems massive. It seems this, you know, and it is in a sense, uh, but it's not that big. And that's why, you know, well, I'll get to that in a minute. The whole point is, is that to get in, to break into this industry, it's not just about talent, because if you show up and you do a great job at an audition, and I've heard horror stories, I've dealt, I've had horror stories um, as a director, as a producer, um, and as a fellow, you know, fellow actor, I've, I've witnessed things and I, I haven't even witnessed things that are as bad as the things that I've heard, but there was, uh, another agent of mine a few years back was upset because this kid, uh, had, uh, and I say kid, he was like, I don't know, 22, 23, he booked a role, he auditioned and booked a role on a TV show. Um, and the TV show required a love scene, sex scene. Um, and if you've never been in that position of auditioning and going through that process on a professional level, that's all, that should be another thing I should talk about um, because that's important too. But uh, there's a process that goes through. So like when you audit, like bef when, when the, when the, uh, the audition goes out to the industry, it says nudity or kissing or sex, you know, intimacy, whatever required for this role don't apply if you're not comfortable with this. And then you apply and then you, you know, you along the way of the process of the uh, auditioning, they, they ask you every time, are you sure you're okay? This is, you look at the script and it says they kiss or they make love or whatever. And you have to keep verifying along the way that you are okay with this. Um, and this kid did that. And he booked the role. And he goes to set. And they shoot the first half of the day. And they go to lunch. And they come back from lunch. But he does not. So production's looking at form. They can't find. They call his agent, my agent. And they're like, where is he? They end up, the agent calls him and is like, hey, where are you? They're back, they're back to, you know, on set. Where, you know, where are you? And he's like, you know, this acting thing is not for me. I decided to go home. And he was, he was at home packing to go back <laughs> to wherever he was from. Um, that, so they had to go back. They had to shut down filming for at least a day, if not a couple days, I can't remember. Um, and they had to recast the role. That cost the production about $150,000 that day. The agent now has a black mark on her or his, I can't remember, but has a black mark because they vouch for this person. They represent this person. Right. So they represent this person said this person's good to go. The person went through this process The produce the production took a risk and said, all right, you said you're good to go. We're committed to this. They committed all these resources, crew, cast, 
studio rental, equipment rental, everything else. And then he bails. And it's easy for him to go home. What about the people who've been, you know, that, that are left in the dust? When you start to see things like that happen, you understand why our industry is so protective of itself. Why, and again, as I started to gain success, whether it was, you know, I experienced it as a teacher, um, I experienced it as an actor. Um, the world's a weird place. The world's a weird place. <laughs> but then, like, uh, that's a whole other thing. But the industry, when people start to see that you can do something for them, um, how people start treating you and approaching you and things like that, uh, that's why these celebrities and people of high, you know, high stature in, in our industry are so shut off and protected because they, uh, and why you see a lot of, you know, celebrities, movie stars, TV stars, things like that, like have these breakdowns because they don't know who to trust because everybody's coming to them and they're not like they're, they're, they're being nice to them and they're doing this to get something from them. They're actually bringing something to the party. But the point is, is that if I've been in the industry for 15, 20, 30, 40 years, and then you come along and you do a great performance, and this has happened too, you might do a great performance in the audition room, but then you get on set and with all the cameras and all the moving parts and everything, you, you can't handle the pressure. Like that. And then you shut down and then it's like, then the director has to work their ass off to uh, get a performance out of you because your nerves and, or your, you know, your lack of uh, your undeservingness, you don't believe, you know, you, all of a sudden you get hit with a case of, um, imposter, excuse me, imposter syndrome. A I, I hear a lot of people say, man, I just, you know, I could be an elite actor. I could be this. It's like, if you haven't been in that position or close to like watching, like being on set and watching the, watching what it takes, it sounds cool. It sounds cool, but it is a lot of responsibility that people don't realize that comes with that. And if you're not prepared for that, if you're not in the mind, just even the mindset of handling something like that. Um, and I don't say this to scare you off. I'm just trying to give you perspective because the mindset, all that, all that can be learned, all, all that can be um, developed. And it usually does. And that's why it's like, you traditionally like work your way up because you like gain confidence, like climbing a mountain or something like that. Like you, slowly gain confidence rather than just like let's go let's climb mount everest um a lot you know most of the time it has nothing to do with talent it has to do with again mindset we've talked about that in our very first video and you know i've talked about in other videos but the reason our industry is like the mafia is because it's like you got to be invited in because you have to earn you have to earn people's trust you have to earn your agent's trust to represent you. They got to, hey, you're like, oh, will you pitch me to this office? They're like, I don't know if you're going to go in there and represent me properly. So it takes time to build that trust that they go, okay, I'll send you to this place and this place because if, you know, shit hits the fan, no big deal. It, you know, it's not really going to affect my reputation. And if you gain their confidence and they start pitching to bigger offices, well, then you go to an, you go to a big cast, you know, a, 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 a medium cat or lower end casting director, or beginning casting director, somebody who's been in it for a while, or, and then you work your way up, but you go into a casting director and you do a great performance and they make a note and they're like, wow, that was a great performance, but I don't know this person well enough. I haven't seen them well enough to see if they can do it consistently. Could they do this for 20 takes? Can they take direction or are they just really good auditioners? And that's the thing. Like there are some people who are really good auditioners, but not good actors. And then there's a lot of us <laughs> that are really bad auditioners, but great actors. Uh, and then there's the, there's people who have found that balance of being a great auditioner and a great actor. Um, but 
is like, how do I know that you're not just a great, like you had two days to prepare for this, but what if the director or, you know, something gets thrown at you? Are you able to uh, make an adjustment and not collapse? That's another thing. Just even being a teacher and a director, how many times, but let's go to the teacher because this happened to me all the time as a teacher, an actor would be in a scene and they would like, they, they'd be really connected and all this great stuff would be coming up. And I could see they just needed a little push to like have a breakthrough. And I'd say, and I go in there just to say, all right, take a breath or whatever. And I just, just to like push them over that line. And as soon as I made like the first syllable came out, they turn to me and they'd be like, I know it was terrible. I, I totally missed that line. And they completely throw away all that momentum and all that work they had built up that I just need to give them a little push over line. They jumped off the cliff and went to the base of the mountain again. And it's like, the casting director has to know that like you look at like a uh uh sheila jaffe you look at a uh april webster you look at uh you know these these big cast directors i i watch i watch film and tv all the time i'm constantly studying and you see their names from 20 30 years ago when they were like the asso the associate and the assistant They've been just like you as a talent, been working your way up. They've been working their way up. They've had to earn their the the credibility along the way. And to get to where they're at, you think they're gonna like think of it like this. Every time a ca an agent, a cast director, a director, a producer, a studio head even puts you in a position, they're putting their reputation on the line. That's why it's like the mafia, because it's like if I vouch for you and then you do, if you've ever seen, I always, I think of Donnie Brasco. If you've ever seen Donnie Brasco, Donnie, Bra um, Johnny Depp plays this undercover FBI agent to infiltrate the mafia. And he gains the trust of Al Pacino over a period of time and Al Pacino vouches for him. And he's like, yeah, he's a good fellow. Like, you know, let him in. So Johnny Depp then becomes part of the, that, that family. And he ends up bringing down um, the, that, that sector of the mafia, who, whatever, whoever it was, but uh, guess who gets killed? Al Pacino. Why? Because he's the one that brought him in and made them all vulnerable. So because he didn't do his job, they all went to jail and stuff like that. So he had to pay the price. You know, who didn't die? Johnny Depp's character. So if you think of it like that, like if, if, if I, as a casting director, I, as an, as, as an agent, I, as a director, whatever, take a chance on you. I'm not just taking a chance on you. I'm not really even taking a chance on you. I'm, I'm risking my shit. I'm risking all the five, 10, 20, 30 years of credibility. I built up, built up. You could, one person could take down overnight. Like it just takes one person or one incident to, to, to put a crack in the dam that then people are like, I don't know, mate, you know, you've done great all these years, but I don't know if you still got it. You might, you know, your time might be over with. So realizing that is that I started to look at it differently is not that if I go in and I do a great performance, I'm going to be booked off that. I'm looking at what long term, how am I nurturing? How am I managing these relationships to let them know that they can trust me? And to go back to that casting director is like you come in and you do a great read and you may be perfect for the part and everything, but nobody knows you. And they're just like, I don't know, like they, they're great for the part, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, I'd rather be safe like this person I've seen before and everything else. And I know, you know, they'll get it within the ballpark. I'd rather do that than risk this. So you don't get the part. But the casting director makes a note and goes, you know, that was, that was a great read, great audition. They had, you know, this, this, this. Another role comes up. You submit, your, your, your agent submits for. And um, they go, hey, that, that was a, that. Was that that guy or girl, let's bring them in again. They did a great job. You come in, you do another great read. Oh, they did it again. And you start to, over time, build their trust to the point where 
if you've been doing it long enough, which has happened to me, I've had casting directors go, Brent, look, <laughs> you're, you're talented, man. You're great. Um, it's just you're, I, the right role has not. I'm looking for a role for you, which is a great feeling because you're like, wow, now that like they're literally I'm on their mind. They're looking for a role to, to put me in that fits me. They're like, look, it's not that, you know, it's not about your town or anything right now. It's that the, it just you haven't been the, the role just hasn't been right for you, but you're on my radar. But what that tells me is that they are now I've I've earned their trust and now they're vouching for me. They're they're fighting for me. If anything, they're looking for jobs for me now. Like my agent, they're like another agent in the sense of like they're on my team. They're 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 looking for like where can we put him? I love him, and I've been in that position as a director, as a, a producer, as a as a casting director. I've I've cast projects, um, pretty much mostly my own, but you know, but I have people reach out all the time, like, hey, Brent, I'm looking for this kind of actor. I'm like, this person, you want this person here, you know? But I do that from a place of I know that. I can trust them. If I cast them in my own project, if I refer them to other friends' projects, it's because I've I I know that they they have the talent one, but that they're not going to make me look bad. Now it still happened. I it has still happened, but yeah, I do the best I can to alleviate that because I'm like my friends, my friend or you know uh, acquaintances reaching out to me um, for referral. Uh, I don't want to put them in a position that hurts them. I had a, uh, a deep, my, uh, my DP, my, my favorite DP that I work with, I referred him to some, someone um, on a project that just, it was a nightmare. And, I, and to the point where I was like, why didn't you just walk off the project? And he's like, man, I, I didn't want to disrespect you. I was like, dude, I feel like, I, I feel like, <laughs> I disrespected you like by hooking you up. He's like, you know, we worked it out, but I was just like, I like, I was ashamed. And I was like, I, I can't believe you treated somebody like that, that I referred to you. And that relationship, you know, was done then because I'm like, no, like you, like you were rep, you're representing me because I referred, you know, this, this, this person to you. So, you know, if you think of it like that, if you, you think your approach and, and how you approach our industry like that of, it is about relationships and it's, it's, it is about talent in a, in one, you know, piece of the piece of the pie, but it's not all about talent. Um, if you, if you talk to people who've been in this industry long enough, they'll tell you about some of the most talented people that have screwed them over. They had the talent. They didn't have the desire. They didn't have the, uh, the uh, uh, stamina. They didn't have the mindset. They didn't have the, the character in the sense of, you know, knowing how to, the etiquette of how to talk to and treat people on set. Like there's so many people, I know talented people that are so insecure that they overcompensate that they think, you know, like they think that being a diva is, um, the way a movie star acts and like they don't even have the credibility to act that way and they go on set and start talking to people and treat people poorly um because they think that's how a movie star is supposed to act to va verify and validate them as a movie star it doesn't go over so well um so keep in mind that when you're asking people to take a chance on you to, you know, please, like I'll do anything for this role. You, you're not asking them to take a chance on you. You're asking them to risk everything that they've built over their time period of whatever it is. What, again, it could be a year. It could be five years. It could be 10. It could be 20. It could be 30 or 40. Like there's people in the business still that, you know, that have been doing it for 40, 50, 60 years. And you're asking them to put their reputation on the line. And if you screw up, like you can, you know, whatever, you're, you're not known as an actor. And so kind of people forget who you are or whatever. 
it's a small industry that 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 doesn't mean go and act like but i'm saying there's a chance that you can redeem yourself but but they've got so much more to lose so therefore they have to be you know they gotta they gotta be protective because you know you screw something up they lose their job or their credibility you're not showing up to feed their family to pay their rent to you know pay to pay the 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 light bill at their their office or whatever it is so think about that like are, are do you even consider what they're putting on the line when they're when when even a cast director takes their short list to the producers or the director and go here are the people i think you should call in to read for this role not even book just read for the role. And even that, like they're, they're risking something because if you go in and act like an asshole or don't have the, the ability, and this goes back to the whole thing. Like, what if you like had all this, I've heard horror stories of this too, of like people that go into the audition and they do great at the audition. They get the callback. They do great at the callback. And then they get called in for a network uh, meeting, which is uh, like a chemistry read. Which, if you haven't seen this movie, um, you should watch this movie. And I say this from the perspective of, or I should say with the warning of not, it doesn't fully represent the industry. And so when I watched it, I was like, wow, like you could easily, if you watch this, you could easily throw up your hands and go, man, I, I don't want anything to do with it. It's not, it's a representation of, of our industry in one way, but it's not the only representation. It's one story of many, but there's a great film. Go into it with, with humor. Like it's, it's making fun of, you know, and not like a laughing at, but kind of like laughing, like you have to laugh or otherwise you'll cry but it's called uh, The TV Set with Dave Duchovny. Um, and he's a writer who creates this, this TV show he sells to a studio and it goes through the process of him, them casting it to the final product. Um, it's brilliant, it just, it's very smart. It's very well done. It's a dark comedy in a sense, but don't, I don't want you to watch that and, and think that that's how our industry functions all the time or 100%. It is a way it has functioned. Um, I just don't want you to get um, uh, frustrated or, you know, whatever. But it's, it's worth a watch if you're, in the, if you're willing to go into it with that mindset. But the point is it opens up with four actors, two male, two female, doing a chemistry read for the lead roles at, at the network. And I can't tell you how many people like go to go to digress, um, go back. They, they do great at the audition. They do great at the callback. And then they go to the chemistry network meeting where they have to read in, in, the, in a little room with 20 executives crammed in there, all just like looking at them that they completely collapse. They completely collapse. And it has nothing to do with their talent. It has everything to do with their self-confidence or their mindset or their ability to handle pressure, whatever it is. And it's like, you know, from, a, from an executive or producer or director's point of view, it's like, man, if you can't handle that pressure and you say you want, you want to carry your own series or you want to carry your own, um, you know, film, it's like, I'm not saying you can't, but you may have to do some more work, go back to the gym, lift some more weights um, to build that confidence. So when the pressure is on, um, you're able to, to navigate through it. And it doesn't, and I say that not from a, people don't, even people like, you listen to Gary Oldman talk, who's been doing it at the highest level for years. And he's one of the most talented people of, you know, his generation. Or, you know, I, I talked about Christian Bale, I think it was last week. Um, you know, just these actors who have been doing it at the top level for a while, they're, they're, they don't 
a lot of them still don't go in going, oh yeah, I got this thing figured out. And they, they don't have all the confidence in the world. But what they do have is the mindset to not allow it to crush them, right? The ability to work through it um, and move forward so that they still, you know, are able to achieve the end goal. But, you know, if, if you're just getting started and you're, or, you know, early on in it and you're not, you don't have the mindset, like there's, there's shit that can crush you just because there's so much pressure and so much happening so quickly. Um, it's a lot to handle. And that's why we see a lot of, you know, we see young um, actors um, and talented people uh, that get, get breaks without having to really, I shouldn't say work their way up, but they don't spend as much time uh, in the trenches. And then they, they get success very early on that they end up burning out and collapsing because they haven't had to learn how to um, sustain and overcome the tough days um, or, you know, the tough days when there's a lot of pressure on when it's like Denzel Washington, I, I listened to him talk one time when he was, uh, you know, and he, to me, he's a very confident, you know, actor. Um, he comes in, in the interviews I've seen with him. He, to me, he doesn't seem like he doubts himself much as an actor. I'm sure he does on some level, but he seems very confident, especially where, you know, he's been doing it long enough and everything. And, but he was talking about one time when he was directing um, his first film, Antoine Fisher, his biggest day was a day with, I think it was a bunch of explosions or, or no, it wasn't. Maybe there weren't explosions, but there were like hundreds of extras and it was a big day, a big shoot day. And he's like, yeah, I didn't want to come out of my trailer. <laughs> and the interviewer was like, what do you mean you didn't want to come out of your trailer? He's like, he's like, yeah, I was, I, I was not confident. I didn't, you know, I was, I just want to get the hell out of there. Cause I didn't, I was so overwhelmed and everything. And he even made, you know, the comedy because the guy was like, you know, you know, well, maybe you could pay, you know, pay oh, only if you could pay to get out of it. He's like, no, I would have paid. Like, he's like, I got, I had the money. <laughs> I would have paid to have somebody else take that, take it over that day for me. He wasn't confident in that, but he, he, he had the tools to work through that and, and not let it crush him. But we see all, you know, if you listen to the trades or things like that, like people leave set, stomp off set, leave set, uh, leave projects, things like that. Um, it happens. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of responsibility, especially the bigger you go, the more, the bigger the budget, the bigger the crews, the cast, everything. It's a lot. It's a lot to manage. Um, and you're, you're asking these people who have gained the trust of other people to go, you know what, whether you start with the studio head, but the studio head has the companies, um, whoever owns the studio the you know that has the uh the board of directors who have the shareholders the shareholders entrust the 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 board of directors to protect them their interest who then entrust this the the you know ceo of the company who then entrust the head of the studio who then entrust their executives who entrust the the producers who entrust the the uh, cast and directors who then entrust the agents to filter out to to mitigate risk so that they have a successful product so that the machine if you will makes money so that it can come over here and do it again and do it again and do it again and if you if if they don't know who you are. You're asking all those layers of that. And I'm not even like, I'm talking about, yeah, the big studio, but let's even go to a small production. Let's go to an independent film that even like something that's, you know, a couple thousand dollars, $500, somebody who scrounges and gets 500 bucks together. They ask their parents and their family for, to donate money, which I've done. I've asked friends and family for money along the way to, to help me fund projects. And, and you're, and then you, 
if somebody hires you for their project, they're putting everything in your hands. Now I say that I do, this is a whole other talk, but that doesn't mean the whole project is on your shoulders. That doesn't mean you make or break the project, but it does mean that you're one part of this, of this process that if any of those parts break down, the thing become cannot, may not, will not work. And so we go into it as actors going, well, just get, you know, I've had this thought many times because, you know, the frustration with auditioning, but I'm like, yeah, just get me on set and let me show you what I can do on set when I'm in the environment working off other actors and everything else. But it's like, I, if, if I get you to that point, like I got to know that you can do the job, not only talent wise, but be able to, you know, uh, fulfill the, 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 you know, the mindset and be a creative collaborator. And what if a director you know, is asking you to do something, are you going to stomp off like a child because you didn't get your way? Or are you able to uh, co-create with them or, you know, whatever it is. If you are hired or even considered for a, one of these positions, a job as an actor on one of these projects, um, you're asking all these people to risk their reputations, their careers, um, and put that on the line as collateral. And if you think of it like that, if you can keep that in mind when you're going into auditions, when you're sending postcards, when you're doing meet and greets and things like that. You're trying to, you're Donnie Brasco. You're trying to get infiltrate the mafia. And the only way to do that is to earn their trust. And how do you do that? You have to prove yourself. And how do you prove yourself? You show up prepared on time consistently. You're continually learning a growing as a human being to learn how to navigate tough situations. You're, you know, going and learning how to do stunts, even just small stunts to understand it. So that if a stunt thing comes up, you're like, you're confident that you're, uh, you're, you know, taking singing lessons, you're taking dancing lessons, you're, you're doing whatever it takes. You're creating your own content, like nothing to me. And I know people get tired of me saying this, but like nothing builds, earns people's respect and trust more than, than people who create their own projects because they're, they're like, wow, they got skin in the game. Not only that, they're, they're, they understand what it takes for that to happen. And so they'll respect it more. What I, prior to COVID, what I was doing with uh, a whole productions, our sister station, <laughs> no. um, which you could check out at a whole pro a, aholeproductions.com you can see all the projects with me but one thing I, I was doing was you know I was taking my you know students and fellow actors and if they wanted to act in one of my projects they had to crew um, a project and then in exchange of crew in a project they got to act in a project and uh, the, those that did it they were like, wow, now I understand what the sound guy's going through when I'm like taking my time and he's holding the boom pole and you know why he's irritating. It's like, cause that thing gets heavy, you know, holding it over your head. Or I understand what it's like to, to run a camera or to do lighting or all these things. Cause for actors, most of the time we're, you know, if you're, you're the sitting in a trailer, sitting on, you know, chair, whatever it is. And we're not paying attention. We're reading a book. We're talking to other actors, whatever. We're not under, we're not participating in the production itself and what it takes. But when you got to do it yourself, when you have to cast your own project, when you write your own project, like when you direct your own project, when you produce your own project, all these things, man, you just, you earn it. It just, it opens you up. And when, when, when you, that, that's, that's the other thing. And I talked about this earlier about people coming with their hands out. It's like, 
if you are not a movie star, if, if you're not a movie star or close to, you know, or like, you know, famous in some form or fashion, if you don't have a massive social following and it, or if you don't come with money um, or a, a script, a great script, an idea, um, you're coming, you're coming begging. And it's just like there there's, and that's where you hear the whole thing with actors. Like, yeah, there's a million of you out there. It's like, what makes you special? You know? And, and I say that from a place of, yeah, we're, we're all special. Like on the human being level, we are special. Um, and, and I think we're all special in the sense that we all see the world differently and we all have our own perspective is, is they are equally as valuable, but when you're asking me who has all the resources, who's worked my way to where I am and, and you show up with your hands out, like, give me an, I just, I just had somebody, I just had somebody leave me a voicemail. I don't know how they got my number. Somebody left me a voicemail and they were just like, uh, yeah, uh, I'm an actor in New York and, um, man, I'm just looking for, you know, an acting job. See if you got any acting jobs. I'm looking between like 16 and $20,000 payday. You know, I just, I just want to get in the game. And I'm just like, who the hell are you, bro? Like, seriously? Like, what do you, you just think that because you deserve like, and sure. Okay. If you think you deserve it, but like, then, you know, I, so I have to bust my ass and I have to, to, to build all the relationships and I have to, you know, cut down you know cut a path through the forest or whatever that is and i'm not saying that to like harm trees it's a metaphor but um like i gotta do all this and then just go yeah bro like cool it's just like what if what are you what value are you bringing to the relationship what value are you bringing to the project so for those of you that are creating your own, even if it's something like, I don't care if it's TikTok, I'll say this about TikTok here. I just got on it and I'm starting to post videos that I created. My perspective, TikTok is my perspective, of most social media right now. Everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, majority of people are doing the bare minimum. They turn on the camera, they put on a song and they go, and, and like, they're like, I'm just like, there's no, like, they're not even, I mean, they're put in an effort because there's people that won't even turn on the camera, you know? So I'll give them credit for that. But it's like, man, if you just put in a little bit of creative effort, there's a girl I follow, Karen XO. Holy shit. She's on, I don't know if she's on TikTok. She's on Instagram. Holy shit. This girl, she, she is a director and she shares how she does, it creates her content, but she is so fucking clever man uh and i've learned so much from her of like camera tricks and stuff like that she's so creative that she's like she has i don't know millions of followers and everything but she's only posted like 600 not i don't even know if it's 600 maybe 300 like videos um but she provides value like she brings a lot to the party and like because of that i'm just like man i want to work with her on something because of what she brings the vision and the ideas that she brings that's valuable to me compared to all the other people just like, that's all they do. And it's just like, come on, man, put in a little bit after my point is I digress. Let me go back to where I was saying, but the point is, is that if you're creating content, what it tells me is that you're willing to put skin in the game. The, the biggest, the biggest momentum I've, gotten in my career like the one move that i've made that uh that like was creating a web series called struggling which you can watch at aholeproductions.com it's funny and it's about our industry it's a it's a love hate letter to our industry a little web series it's not too long um i did that as a passion project kind of as a venting passion project because i was like had a like i hit a wall wall with the industry but I submitted that. I a friend told me that that uh, the the Emmys uh, had a category for web series, so I submitted. 
and the the amount of doors and opportunities and conversations that open with people that I was that I said because again people are coming with with their hands out oh like like me or you know can I get your autograph and all that stuff and I just walk up and go hey I'm Brent Harvey I have a web series is up for two Emmys would you like to hear about it and they they like stop they they oh hang on what did you say you say you have a web series that's up for two Emmys? I didn't even know that was a thing. And I had their attention and every, and just all these people started showing up and, and just like all this momentum in my career just burst overnight. M- more happened in the couple months of that process than it happened in the eight years prior to my hustling. Because people like were like, oh, you, 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 you got skin in the game. So if you want to earn people's interest in this industry, you got to put skin in the game. You want to earn a, a agent, like agent, an agent is getting, especially the good agents, like the people, and I say good in the sense of people who have built, again, their relationships with gas directors and everything else. Um, you, want to, you want to get uh, them to represent you. What makes you different than all the other people that are on, doing that you know uh in their emails and submissions of like why they should represent you it's like what makes you different that they're going to go and invest in you because think about this and i want you agents don't get the credibility and managers do not get the credibility they deserve because so many actors go to them and just like get me a job and it's like what you don't see is that they are they are taking you on and they're putting in every day, five days a week, at least five days a week, submissions and emails and everything else without the guarantee of being paid. Now, most actors and creators out there are just like, I'm not, you know, we, we don't like auditioning because it takes up so much time in the sense of like, well, now it's easier with self tapes. But when we, had, you know, prior to COVID, when we had to drive around and park and everything else, it was, uh, eat up our whole day. And we're like, man, I, I could have made 200 bucks at work today or something like that. They're submitting every day without the guarantee of being paid until you get a job. And so they're going, when they sign you on, they're like, I'm trusting that this person has the talent and the ability to book work that I get for, if I'm going to work to get them an audition, that they can carry that, the baton over the line and get us both paid. Right? So what, why should they represent you? Why should the casting director call you in? Why should the casting director, why should the producer call you back? Why should the producer hire you? What makes you different than all these other people that are just coming with their hands out? Nothing to offer except for I'm an actor and, and I think I'm good. It's called show business. Show me what you can do. Make videos like you know, if you go on LA casting stuff like that now, you you can load up clips. If you go on mine, you'll see you see me riding a horse, you see me skateboarding, you see me jump rope. Like I went out one, I think it was a couple of days in a row, but I just went out with, and I was like made a list of all the skills that I could do, and I just went out and I shot 30, 60 seconds of each thing. But it's like, you know, if you show them what you could do, show them what sets you apart. All right. Like, what can you, what is it about you? And if you do that, this turned into create your own content uh, episode somehow, but, but it's true. Like you, like you want to impress me and make me stop. Well, hang on. What did you say? Do something. And it doesn't even have to be something extravagant. Like nobody's ever done before. But do something that somebody else has done before, but do it in a way that nobody else has done it, which is your voice, your imagination, right? But that's how you, you know, you go back to the Donnie Brasco thing, right? I don't remember the movie like beat by beat, but like if, if Donnie Brasco, and I think he did this in, the, in one of the scenes, but it's like he didn't wait for, Al Pacino to say, Hey, I want you to go do this job. I think he like set, went and like 
after a guy or something like beat the hell out of him or something like that when he wasn't asked to for then Al Pacino to go, whoa, look at that guy. He's got tenacity. He's, you know, look, he's, he's a good fella, you know, and all that other stuff, you know, don't wait until you're asked, like do it. And as I tell actors all the time, it's like, people are like, oh, I just want the dream role. What's a dream role? Well, it looks like this, this, and this. I'm like, great, write it and shoot it. Show them that you can do it. Right. So my point to all this is, is that if you think of our industry like the mafia in the sense of you have to gain the trust of the people along the way to vouch for you need somebody to vouch for you to get you to this point who then vouch for you and work your way up to where people trust you. You have to earn people's trust. And that's not just one time like, oh, I did a great job acting like I killed that audition. Right. But maybe you were just you just had a good day. Like that's what they that's how they look at. It. Like maybe they just had a good day. But what are they going to do when we when they got to do this for two weeks in a row? You know, or um, three months in a row. Or if you're looking at like, a, you know, you look at like a, these big budget, you know, Marvel movies and stuff like that, like you know the director is is on a project for two years pre-production production post-production post two years the studio's got a studio definitely has to trust that person that they hire that they can handle that pressure and the director has to trust that you can do your job otherwise his their job collapses so if you approach it from that going, look, I know that I have to earn your trust and you can sit down, make a list, like make a list of the things that you can do to earn the trust of the casting director, of the producer, of the director, of the whatever, you know, fill in the blank. It's all going to be different, right? Because they require different things a lot of times to, to prove uh, that you can do the, you know, that they can trust you. But man, once you get, once you, and here's the, here's the thing. Once you're in, you're in. But getting in is, is the, is the, uh, is the process. I don't want to call it the hard thing because it's not that it's actually not that hard. It's very simple. Um, doing the work, you know, pushing the wheelbarrow. Just push the wheelbarrow. Um, yeah. So if you think of our industry like that, and I don't, uh, I don't mean in the bad way of, you know, but yeah, if you think of it like that, of like, I have to earn this person's trust to vouch for me because not because it's, you know, this idea of it, but because they literally are putting their, their ass on the line when they, submit you up when they vouch for you they're saying hey i trust this person going to do a great job and in doing so they're representing me and i you know i practice this in every aspect of my life i will not i've had people come to me and be like hey brent like you got these student stuff will you tell them about my thing and i'm like no not until i try it like i will never refer somebody or something to other people unless i personally have tried it and uh you know endorse it I guess, but I guess that doesn't stand true as me as an actor because I've done commercials for things I've never used, but I haven't thought about that till now. But, uh, but yeah, but I mean, but in my personal life, like, you know, and, and professional life outside of doing commercials as an actor. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't refer people or things unless I've personally, uh, tried them or, um, experience them or you know done the course or whatever it is for that reason because i i i was raised and i grew up in a in a community that was like you know your your referral your word was meant something and it had credibility and it had weight so you know don't just like oh yeah you should go try this you know which i see a lot of people do but yeah our industry is like people have worked their asses off and they've sacrificed a lot to get to where they are and to then just ask them, hey, like I'm 
I'm new in town or you don't know who I am. I've been acting for 10 years or whatever, but you don't know who I am. Hey, book me, you know, sign me up for this project. It's like, man, you, I don't know you. Are you a cop? <laughs> like, but that's, I mean, that's how it is. That's really, it's like, I don't know you. Are you a cop? Because you got to tell me. No. Um, but yeah, so I don't know, man. I hope this helps because I, when it clicked for me, I was like, oh, that makes, so, it made it so much easier for me to approach our, our business because I was just like, oh, it's not personal. They're not like, uh, it's not personal. Like, oh, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want this guy to have a job or, you know, whatever. It's just like, no, they're like, I don't, I don't know this person well enough to submit them to this other person who, who I've built a relationship with for the past 10, 15, 20 years. But I'll tell you what, once you start, when you earn that one person's trust and they get you in and you continue to earn people's trust, you know, that's when the town starts, you know, talking about you. And like, I mean, we do it ourselves. Like, think I'll wrap up with this. Think about this. We do it ourselves. When we go watch a movie or a TV show with a specific actor or director, we do that because they've earned our trust. And then there's actors and directors who either we don't know or have had a, quite a few bombs. And we're just like, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I just don't want to spend my $20 in my day. Like, I don't want to drive to the movie theater, spend $20 and sit down because I don't know if it's going to be a good movie. But then you're like, yeah, you know, I know Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie or, you know, Julia Roberts or, Gary Oldman or whatever. I they've done so many movies that I like. Like the new movie comes out, I'm in. Whatever they're doing, I went and saw this Nicolas Cage movie where Nicolas Cage played himself because I'm just like, you know, even when he makes a bad movie, it's still a good movie because like his commitment to his stuff. And so I I'm like I'm in. Like he's earned he he's earned my money in that sense. Like whether it's like I I want to see him in a drama, an action film, or a, a ridiculous comedy. Like he's, 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 he's earned my trust. So like when he comes out with something ridiculous, like, yeah, I'm playing myself in this movie and da, 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 da. I'm just like, I'm in. Right. And I'm not disappointed. And there's other people that I'm like hit and miss. I'm just like, yeah, I'll wait till that comes out on streaming. So we do it naturally in our own lives, you know, or restaurants we do it with restaurants and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So uh, it's not like our industry is, uh, you know, any different than society itself but hopefully that everything i shared with you that perspective and that point of view of how to look at it helps you navigate and hopefully uh maybe adjust your approach to it and your mindset to it so you you look at it from a different perspective and go oh i see what's going on and again it's not personal and it's not that they don't want me to be successful and everything. They're just, they're, they're protecting themselves, their assets. And, you know, they're, I mean, if you really look at their families, like they want to know that they can, they're going to um, be able to feed their families um, and, and take care of what they need in their businesses. So, yeah. And as you gain, as you personally gain success, you'll, you know, you'll see why you'll see why because a lot of people come with ill intentions or they're not ready for it and they're going hey and you know you you go hey man i you know somebody gave me a break or you know i'd like to give one when, when i get to this place i want to give people breaks it's like yeah you do until it's like somebody calls you don't even know who they are and says you know where's this thing I was calling to see if you have a movie that you can put me in. Oh, for 12 to 20,000. If, if so, I'm the guy, here's my number. Oh, he also said I'm an army guy because he's trying to play on my veteran thing. Um, I'm an army guy ready for the job. It's like, dude, I don't know you like, you know? <laughs> so anyways, don't do that. Like, if you're going to do that, have something to back it up with. Um, anyways, so I'll leave it with that. Hope that helps. You're Donnie Brasco. Um, the casting director is Al Pacino. Just trying to earn their trust.
Um, so yeah, hope that helps. I went on a couple of rants today and, uh, if it didn't help, then don't listen to it. If it did, great. And if, you know, there's somebody else, another fellow artist, creator that uh, you know that that might find value in this, share it with them. Because that's the purpose of this is to, to help people on their journey and hopefully make it uh, make it a, a less turmoil journey than what I went through. You know, I, I'm all about helping people um, in that respect that I can. Um, because we all, I learned from talking about it and hopefully people learn from it, from listening to it. So hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at, at actorshole at gmail.com. If you have any questions or if you want me to talk about any, any specific topics, uh, and, and remember we, I do this every Saturday at 11 AM, uh, Pacific time. That's LA time. So anybody can jump on um, and listen live and also ask questions through our chat. And, uh, and you know, maybe uh, if somebody's up for it, has a good enough question, uh, I can do a coaching with somebody live because that's a great way for people to learn too. Cool, cool. Uh, enjoy your week. I got to run. I got a, a meeting to get to on a pilot I'm writing. See, putting in the work. Um, yeah. So, uh, enjoy your week, be creative and take care of yourselves.